We have been applauding for performance. I think we should give Dr. Burnett. He didn't do badly for a guy with a sore thumb. We thought we weren't going to have him today, but he recovered. Good morning. Garrett and Bridget are away on a well-earned, well-deserved vacation, so it's my honor to be able to welcome you all to our worship service this morning. We're so glad to have you. We have a good turnout. Several weeks ago, we had Women's Day, Women's Sunday. And I remember commenting to Barbara afterwards that I thought that was one of the most beautiful services I'd ever seen in this church. It was so well done. Today's Men's Sunday. And I don't think we're going to be as impressive as the ladies were, but we're going to do our best. Jerry got us off to a good start. Um, before I forget it, Chastity wanted me to make an announcement that today after the children's sermon, there will be what a ch children's church for kindergarten through fifth grade, is that right? Back at wherever they have it, okay? <laughs> I didn't do it very well, Chastity. But <laughs> our service today will feature three of our laymen giving a testimonial, a brief testimonial on what prayer has meant to them in their lives. And I feel quite sure that their words will have, will be meaningful to all of us. Again, thank you for your presence. Now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and for all of your bountiful blessings for good health during this pandemic and the opportunity to come together in this beautiful sanctuary and worship in a free country, a freedom that we should never take for granted and that we will again celebrate next week on July 4th. We thank you for the men of this church and we ask your blessings and your support for those who are contributing to this service. We offer this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Victory who led me a 
across the divine. Some morning you'll find me touring that city where with him I'll forever abide. Some morning you'll find me touring that city where the Son of God is alive. You'll find me there on the streets so pretty, made of gold so pure and so bright. With Jesus, the one who gave me the victory, who led me across the divide. Some morning you'll find me touring that city where with him I'll forever abide. Oh, with him I'll forever abide. Oh, yes, with him I'll forever abide. Another week, <clears throat> Pastor Garrett, if I would mind, asked if I would mind doing something for the service today. I said, Sir Garrett, I'd be happy. What? He said, just take three to five minutes and speak on prayer and what it means to you, with three minutes being preferable to five. <laughs> I traveled to Louisville this past week for a conference and can tell you that some impromptu prayers came up on several occasions. I woke up at 3 a.m. and got to the airport in what I thought would be plenty of time only to see several lines that I need, would need to be in about a mile long. There was also the Uber driver that took, me, that took me to the airport and drove a minivan faster than anything at South Boston Motor Speedway. I was holding on to that handle and just said, Lord, please let me get to this airport in one piece. After getting there, I figured the Uber driver may have said a prayer for a good tip from this guy in the back seat. He got a pretty good one. While traveling, I spent quite a bit of time considering what I will say today and found Garrett's simple request turned out to be no easy task. So I decided to just tell you about the things that I pray for daily and also the things that occasionally come up or situations that arise. Every morning prior to sleep, I give thanks. Thanks for my family and the joy they bring to my life. Thanks for being born in this great country. Thanks for our church and Pastor Garrett. Thanks for my business and the many friendships and relationships that have been developed over the years. I ask for my forgiveness of my many sins and shortcomings for the airmen. I ask for strength and wisdom. I pray for those who are dealing with illness and struggles as well as their parents and kids who take on those burdens even more sometimes. I pray for our leaders that their hearts and minds be filled with more love and less hate, representing others than their own self-interest. And finally, I ask that my talents and blessings that have bestowed upon me may be used in a way that makes a positive difference for my family, my work, our community, and our church, that we bring each other and others closer to Christ. Sometimes when I'm really struggling or something is really concerned, I find that before going to bed, if I just take some time, have a personal conversation with our Lord, and, uh, and God, and just let him know what's in my heart and mind, lay out my struggles and concerns, and just simply ask that he show me the best path forward. I try not to bother him with the small stuff, but those occasions, I sleep much better and usually wake up much earlier. My wife, Jenny, will kind of know what's going on, and she kind of notices when I wake up in the morning, I may have a few different mannerisms, but certainly some more pep in my step. Um, I know on those mornings what I'm going to do, why I'm going to do it, and how it's going to go down, with the feeling that I have God on my side. On many occasions, usually in nature, like during a beautiful sunrise or sunset, rainbow, wildlife, people laughing, or after any moving experience, I will just say a quick prayer, thanking God for the reminder of how blessed we are to be alive in his world and experience his creation. 
Thank you. Good morning. Today I will be reading from Luke chapters 11, verses 1 through 10. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then he said, suppose one, of, suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give you the bread because he is his friend, yet because, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. Thank you. Nobody's walking up front. Children's sermon, let's go. <laughs> Y'all come on up front. Good morning, good morning. Where do y'all normally go now? Where do we go? If we sit up, sit up here, y'all line up. Y'all sit down and make yourselves comfortable. Good morning, good morning. It's so good to see everybody in person. I've been watching you on TV. Did you know y'all were TV stars? On YouTube. Do you ever go back and watch yourselves on YouTube? You should do that. It's fun. It's fun. So, let's make sure that I know everybody up here real quick and everybody else knows everybody. Tell me your name. Lacey. Lacey. Nicholas. Nicholas, and this is? L. I'm sorry? L. L. Emery. Emery. Ellis. Oren. 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 And? Brody. 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 All right. Well, I'm Darden, and uh, my wife is back there, Sue. And I'm going to talk to you today about a verse, a particular verse in the Bible from 1 Peter chapter 4, and it's verse 10, and it goes like this. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. So each one should use their gift to serve God and serve others in God's community. What does that mean? What does that mean? So, Ellis, let me ask you. If I asked you to preach the sermon like Pastor Garrett does, could you do that right now? Could you preach a sermon for 20 minutes? No, I couldn't either. I couldn't either. And, Lacey, if I asked you to direct the choir like Susan does, could you do that? No, well, I couldn't either. I love music, but I cannot reproduce it in any way. So, what it means is, is whatever you can do to help serve God and serve our church, you should do. For example, just the other day, my youngest son and I came over and cut the grass. We signed up to cut the grass every, I don't know, six or seven weeks, and we came to the church because that's something I can do. I've been doing that all my life. And my son Roger worked the string trimmer and the push mower. And I rode the riding mower, just like nature intended. 
and we got the grass cut. And I wasn't worn out at all. But uh, so that's something we can do. Recently, we had an old couch at our house that still worked well. You could still sit on it, look nice, but my wife said it was time for another couch. So guess what we did? We called Dwight right there on the front row and said, Dwight, we have furniture to donate to the warehouse that the church has for people who maybe have a fire and they can't uh, they don't have any furniture. So Dwight met me at the warehouse and we donated the couch. So what is something that you guys could do? What, what, what is something that you guys can do? Can you guys work on a card maybe for somebody? So like suppose somebody's in the hospital. Could you guys do a get well card or just a, a thinking of you card, something like that? Sometimes your teachers here help you do that. Chastity, I know you, you guys do stuff like that. You could just take a post-it note and write something simple on the post-it note just for somebody because it really brightens their day. This is a self-portrait that someone gave my wife, Sue. And let me tell you, every time we see that, we smile. You can't help but smile when you see that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just something simple like that is what you guys can do, and then as you get older, you'll be able to do more and more and more things to help at your church and to help serve God, and that's what God expects from us, and that's, that's what we need to do. And you guys are already doing stuff like that. Maybe it's helping carry supplies in when we are doing fundraisers or donations or something like that. And so everybody, no matter what our age, can do something to serve God, just like it says in First Peter, okay? So, we're going to have a quick prayer, and we do have children's church, right? So, you guys will follow chastity out. All right, so let's say a quick prayer before we head to children's church. Dear God, we thank you so much for bringing us together today in your house of worship to learn about you and to be with other Christians and to learn what we need to do. Help us to spread your word, to tell others about you, and to serve you in whatever way we can. Please guide and lead us throughout each day in all that we do and all the decisions that we make. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Yeah, when uh, I didn't get a call from Garrett, I got a call from Coleman. <laughs> Garrett, not that he was afraid to ask, but it was probably that three minute to five minute part that blew his mind. But you know, being an old country boy from down south, it takes me a little longer to say things and all my master gardeners know that, um, than some of you folks from up north. You rapid fire it, whereas I put it out a little slower. And, you know, what has prayer meant to me? Prayer, you know, when I was born, I didn't know anything about prayer. When I was a child, we started going to church. I didn't know anything about church, but I learned. And some of the most wonderful things that I learned is that there is someone you can turn to that's always there. That's God. And God thought so much of all of us that he sent his son for our salvation of sin. Because Lord knows I've sinned enough, I've gotten into more trouble, I've gotten more whoopings than my sister ever got. <laughs> I still think it was a uh, uh, mom looked out for her. But seriously, you know, without God in my life, would I be the person I am today? Would I be able 
to reach out and try to help others? I don't think so. I think, you know, I had something written out here. I'm not. Prayer is so meaningful if you if it's coming from the heart. God is listening all the time. He hears. He knows what you're thinking. And when somebody cuts you off on the road and you say something, well, guess what? He heard you. And you can ask for forgiveness. And you know what? He will probably forgive you. Just don't let it happen again. You know, there was... In my earlier, younger years, I was in Boy Scouts for 27 years. And uh, many of those were as a Cub Master and a, and a Scout Leader. And one of my fellow Scout Masters um, told a story one night. We were, had all the kids bedded down. and Anyway, he said, uh, you know, we all can help someone, and that's what God wants us to do. We can't help everybody. In fact, uh, our 40th president, um, uh, Ronald Reagan, said something similar. We can't help everybody, but one person can reach out and help someone else. And that's what God wants us to do. You know, you are closer to God when you are in prayer than any other time. And I know, Jay, when you were trying to figure out how to do this in three to five minutes, how do you? You did a wonderful job. And I know that God will always look out for each and every one of you and those that aren't here today and those that haven't even been touched yet. It's up to us to go reach those, touch them, and bring them into his fold. And, you know, we all, growing up, learn those wonderful uh, uh, short prayers, if you will, when you uh, went to eat uh, breakfast. God is great and God is good. And let us thank Him for our food. By His blessings we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Every day that you get up, He has given you a choice. He's given you a day. Can you make it a good day? Or are you going to be a sourpuss and make it a bad day? And you know what? I choose to make it a good day, even if I am hurting. Um, he's going to he's gonna lead me. He's going to keep me going. And that is what prayer is all about. A close relationship with your maker. Knowing all those things that he can do for you. He can forgive. And he can listen intently, quietly, and he can speak to you. Now, it may not be immediately. It may be several days later. It could be weeks later. But you know what? He's going to speak to you. And we just have to keep our ears and minds open for that glorious moment when he speaks. We've got to listen. Thank you for each of you and what you do at, uh, at South Boston First Baptist Church. This church has, a, has a, great, a great outreach program. How did it happen? Through prayerful concern for others. And you know, even when we were apart during COVID, we managed to keep together and we're here together today to worship God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your love and your grace that you bestowed on us through the, the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to live in a free country where we're free to worship you, and we honor the men and the women who sacrificed to give us that freedom. Lord, we ask your blessings on all our fellow Christians, especially those in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East who are subject to persecution. We ask for your blessings on those who are suffering through difficult times that are, could be spiritual, physical, or financial. We ask for your protection on members of our congregation who are traveling. We ask for your forgiveness for our sins. We pray for your guidance, both for the congregation as a group and each person individually. Help us to remember that we are here to serve and worship you, God. Lord, help us to serve you outside the walls of this building. Remind us that as we do unto others, we have done to you. Make us wise stewards of our monetary, physical, mental, and spiritual gifts. Be with each one here today. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Like Jay, I got the call from Garrett, and I also got a call from Coleman. And um, I had lots of reservations about this, the fact that I hadn't been participating in church for a while, and I just didn't feel comfortable up here. And I prayed, and I thought, and I prayed, and I thought. and. Um, a lot of things came to my mind, and um, some of the things were, were good, some of them were not too good, and I just thought that prayer was so personal to me. Um, it's a time that I can reflect and think about the things that I've done and pray for forgiveness and pray for others who are hurting and who are sick. And I just, sometimes prayer to me is just like really kind of powerful. Um, something will move me, I'll see something. And uh, thank God for the beauty and the wonderful things that he has here on earth for us all. And, but I just, you know, I had a hard time with this, and um, I just didn't feel too comfortable about coming up here. And then I thought about, you know, what this church has meant to me, and, and um, the people here, and, and all the prayers that everybody here have contributed to, to doing the great things that this church has done. And um, it made me feel better and a little bit more relaxed about it. But um, I just really enjoy my quiet time sometimes. When I drive to work every morning, uh, that's when I usually do my praying. Um, I'm just so busy all the time, and it's, it's, to me it's a sin not to have my devoted time where I'm not distracted by driving. But... Um, it's just, it's just where I'm at in my life right now, and it's, it's hard to be so faithful to prayer. And it's, um, it's been a hard time, but I do what I can do, and um, 
I thank the Lord for my life and the people that are in my life and all the blessings, my family and children, and um, all the things that he has just totally blessed us with. And uh, it humbles me and makes me think about uh, prayer even more. And there's a lot of times during the day that I'll halfway lose it and um, I'll be back in the corner of the shop doing something and I just sit there and just I pray. <laughs> just like, give me the strength, forgive me, you know, let me go apologize to somebody or whatever, you know, just do something good. It's, it's been um, very humbling. <laughs> But prayer is so powerful, but to me it's so personal. And um, like I said, when Garrett called me to do this, I, was, I called him back and I said, Garrett, I said, I don't know if I can do this. He said, just come on, just, just do it, you know? And I was just like, okay. <laughs> but um, I am very thankful that we have a Lord that we can go to and feel comfortable with and it's um, it's something that we all should cherish and do as much as we can to be uh, faithful to God and to uh, give him our worries and our cares and our, our thanks and uh, I'm just thankful for First Baptist Church and all the people here and the growth that I've had over the years. And um, I just want to thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Before we sing, I have a couple of other comments I want to make. Um, number one, I want to thank everyone who participated in this service, especially Landon. Landon, you handled yourself well. I know your mom and dad are proud of you. And we appreciate you doing this. I also want to make a little announcement. Bill Bolte was supposed to have a part in our service today, but unfortunately he had to stay in Northern Virginia for his work demands. Sarah is here today, and I think we have an announcement that they are the proud grandparents of a new grandson, and I think we should uh, recognize <laughs> Another thing I want to do is, is, is kind of apologize, I guess. Garrett and I talked a lot about the timing of this thing, and we, we uh, we're concerned about getting everything in before uh, 11 o'clock, and it, we're going to run early. And I, we may have our old Alabama boy come back up here. I don't know, but uh, it, it, it has gone along very well. And the other thing I want to say a word or two about our last speaker. Buster and Regina, I understand, are going to be leaving us in the not too distant future. And if Garrett were here, I'm certain he would be saying some words of thanks to Buster and Regina, but especially to Buster for the leadership and the effort he's put into this church. Uh, we have a massive physical facility here, and it takes a lot of work. And sometimes the people who do it get overlooked. I believe Buster and uh, Regina joined our church about five or six years ago. He's been on the properties committee for the last four years, and I think chaired it for the last three years, Buster, is that right? And uh, his leadership has been instrumental in s s so many projects, such as the HVAC, the hallway lights, the fire alarm system, the sanctuary lighting, sanctuary heat pump, North Main Street doors, new lobby doors, new bathrooms, roof replacement, uh, with insulation, sound panels for the sanctuary, sound mixer board, new fire roll-up doors, driveway opening to Main Street, 
paving in the parking lot. This guy has really put forth the effort. He's going to be missed, and we appreciate this deeply. Buster and Regina, we thank you. We shall miss you, and we wish you good health and much happiness in your new home when you, when you do go. And let's show him our appreciation. Okay, we'll try another one. <laughs> I'd like to thank Coleman. I think Coleman pretty much um, planned this whole thing. He and Garrett, he's put a lot of work into it, and we certainly appreciate that. Coleman, compared to the women, I think we did a pretty good job. We just don't look as nice as they did, you know? So we have a few announcements that I'd like to bring to your attention. Um, Vacation Bible School is going to be Saturday, July the 10th. It's a one-day event from 9 to 12. If you have not volunteered, to do that, please, please do so. And I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. 
I've already volunteered. I don't know what I'll be doing, but um, hopefully it'll be something that I will be able to do. Uh, but please see Chastity, or you can fill this out and put it in the basket at the door. Um, youth Bible study, they will be meeting, um, they used to be meeting Wednesday night at um, 6 p.m., um, and that's Wednesday, June the 30th. Um, no virtual Bible study this um, Wednesday night. And I'd like to call your attention to the flowers um, up in the baptistry. Barbara Harmon and Tommy Nelson um, have donated those. Most of you probably know that they moved to Winston-Salem this week, and First Baptist is really going to miss them. Um, they have been really important in the life of our church for the past few years. I know our Sunday school class, we are really going to miss them because they were very instrumental in getting that started and keeping us going. So Barbara and Tommy, if you're watching this, know that we love you and we wish you well. Would you please stand? Receive this blessing. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God be reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Go in peace.